Well, it's been a pretty interesting couple of days since Balance came in and the new PvP map updates. Hopefully, you guys caught my videos on those. Well, just a moment ago, the devs released a new trailer for War Eternal, the upcoming Living World release. Now, this is a big release for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's the finale of this season. We've got high expectations for the content, the story, and whatnot. But also... It is the moment, the final Generation 2 Legendary, a process that started way back with Heart of Thorns in the original three, then Chuka come later. It's when the final Gen 2 Legendary is added to the game, and the devs have saved the best for last, uh, I guess according to most. That's the Greatsword. So in this trailer, they've revealed what the new Legendary GS looks like, as well as some other little features, as well as a more uh, tangible release date, which is obviously saying here on the header, header of this post, arrives in May. So we've got a trailer to get through, and also in this video, there were a lot of other little things I want to run you guys through also, but let's start with the juicy stuff. Here's the trailer in full, and let's see what we can see. Alright, so there it is, the trailer. Now, a lot of you guys will probably notice, if you've been watching my videos over the past couple of weeks where we've watched War Eternal stuff a lot, some of this stuff is reused. Like, what we're looking at right now, I've already talked to you about. This is the same shot when they were very first hinting at the new dragon mount. I've done a video on it already, so we won't talk too deeply about these moments, but there are some other cool things to pick at, uh, obviously. So as we roll through, this is the first teaser, and those who have been watching me throughout the other releases of this Living World season might recognize this is kind of what they did with the Twitter teasers, except now they're not coming out as Twitter teasers so much. They're just sort of all coming together, stitched together in, in a trailer form. But so we get that first shot of the sky scale moving into this second Second shot here of the new greatsword. When I first looked at this, it honestly uh, struck me as a weapon that was already in game. Like it vaguely reminded me of the Dominator Black Lion stuff, I dare want to say. And I didn't think I was looking at anything major. Then the animation started and I realized, oh wow, this is actually totally different. So one expectation we had of the new legendary greatsword is during generation one, i.e. when the game first came out, they did three greatswords. They did a day one and night one and then you could merge them together so you could get them together. So the idea was, are they going to do that for Great Swords again? Because the rest of Generation 2, they've only had, you know, one Legendary, one Legendary, one Legendary. But what if Great Sword gets the same treat treatment? It seems the devs haven't done that. And maybe that's fair because to give the Great Sword favoritism to the GS both times might have ticked some people off. But I would say that very quickly, if Elite Specializations come out again on the next expansion, we might be in a place where every single class can use a greatsword. So at that point, is it really favoritism? Uh, but hey, there are some things for us to talk about. At this point in the trailer, they haven't given us the name, so I'll withhold that. Uh, and we just get the Silvari sort of holding it. This is obviously the middle of the idle animation. Uh, we can see that his hand is glowing. It's wrapped with these like golden bands. I'm pretty sure that is a part of the, the uh, greatsword. And with it as well, you can see that there's these little branded crystalline chunks which makes me think this is going to be somewhat associated with Krauk, Aureen, Glint, that kind of realm of stuff which we would anticipate this release in general is going to have a lot to do with. So that leads me on to one of the other big things. There's been a lot of speculation as to what this great sword might end up being. There are a lot of big swords in the Guild Wars lore and we have seen on some cases the devs have taken things from lore. The Shining Blade they kind of created new lore to make it the legendary weapon actually mean something. Uh, the Claw of the Karner is a much more powerful and recent example, I think. So were they going to do something with the Greatsword? One of the popular theories that I even kind of liked the idea and bought into a bit of was when we had the Requiem short story with Ritlock recently, we saw Ritlock putting down Sahothin. 
And the theory then was, wow, what if Sohofen is like the great sword legendary? What if we get to pick that up and actually get to use it? And you guys might say, well, it's a sword, not a great sword. But then it was super powerful and amazing. And it was like five skills and stuff at the end of Path of Fire. So there was a little bit of reason. I think the more likely reason they wouldn't do something like that is possibly because there's still a future story to be told very prominently with Sohofen. And the claw of the Kana is a bit more distant and they don't have any really solid plans for. But then also, it might just be, guys, there's a lot of fire things in the game. You've got the fuse set, you've got the fiery dragon sword, you've got Volcanus when we move specifically to great swords as well. So, you know, when Volcanus is in the game, do we really need a legendary that's just like Volcanus plus? So, uh, yeah, maybe that's kind of the, the, the thing that's going on there. They went with something very different, a very different sleeker design here. Uh, very bladed. It feels really sci-fi to me. I don't know, does anyone else get those vibes off of it? But as far as I know, not currently established in any lore. And we'll come back to that in a second with the name of it. Moving forward, we get so we get a shot of the sky scale, then the legendary, and now we get this as well. This is the third feature, if you will, that the trailer is looking at. We are once again shown a Silvari, a pink Silvari in this black, uh, spiky looking armor. You guys know me. I don't really care that much about Fashion Wars 2. One of the worst things about my trailer analyses is I won't recognize whether it's like the commander or something because whether they're in player armor or whatever. This is a new set of armor. I couldn't tell you if this was heavy, medium, or light. I immediately think heavy, but also it feels like it could be a bit medium and sometimes light looks like this. Anyway, it's a new set of armor, which they'll talk about in just a moment. I don't need to provide any commentary on whether you think it looks good. You can decide that for yourself. The one other thing I would say about the armor is uh, one of my favorite things about a star to guide us was the Requiem armor. I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed working for that. And obviously Requiem armor, armor is super shiny and stuff. And I was doing it late enough that the sigils of nullification weren't exactly dragging down in my pocket and I never sort of got on board with that upset about the economical side of things. But uh, the, given how much I enjoyed Requiem in that previous patch, I'm kind of looking forward to getting a new armor set in this one too. It's one of the main things people ask for for years and years and years, more actual armors, and they just kind of come in now. I I think to less fanfare than they deserve, frankly. So, yeah, I'll give it a bit on this video. I'm happy to see new armor there. All right, so then the trailer basically loops back, right? So it goes to this feature again, the sky scale. This is a shot we've already seen, and this is a shot we've already seen. Uh, if you guys want me to pause and talk more about this, I will point you happily to another video on my channel right now. Just click Wooden Potatoes. It's right there on your screen below this video, and you'll find me doing a whole video specifically about the sky scale and these exact shots with the airships in the background and everything. Um, this one, I, yeah, we saw this one. We saw this one. It felt a little bit new for a second there. But so, yeah, basically we get that, that one. Now we get this. It's a new trailer, essentially a mini trailer. Uh, new legendary greatsword, Exordium. So, here's the name. Now, Exordium does actually mean something. I took the second to do a quick Google define before doing this video. And the description of this word is that it means the beginning or introductory part, especially of a discourse or treatise. So what that has to do... Now, here's the thing. Let me roll back very slightly. When we got the Shining Blade, legendary, it was actually associated with the story that was going on at the time. The Claw of the Kana, not quite so much. But I wonder, and it, we've actually got this kind of crystalline branded effect on the legendary, uh, up, up the arm of the character wearing it, right? So what kind of discourse or treaty or, you know, um, arrangement is... What, what terms are being come to in this patch between what factions? What What is it here? And also the idea that we're at the beginning or the introduction of some part? I don't know. Maybe the answer, guys, is there are multiple great swords, and we'll have the Exordium is one about the beginning of this, and then is there a word for the conclusion? Is there an antonym for ex Exordium? We'll have another another great sword for that. I don't know. It's a curious name, though, that is quite perplexing to me, and is quite exciting, too. You tend to think when these finales come up that we're reaching the culmination of all our stories, and we're sort of in the end game of these stories, but... You know, if the devs have tons of new stories they want to tell, loads of new places, it's not just go to Cantha, kill a couple of Elder Dragons, we're at the end of the road, but this is a new beginning in this finale, then, and the, the Great Sword somehow expresses that, I don't know, it, it seems exciting, I like, I like the language in use there, but that's the name. Uh, and here we get a little bit more of a look, so I'll just point out the environment we're in straight away. So... Okay, well, first of all, you've got some skimmers, and you've got uh, a, a shutdown waypoint back here. We look like we're in the same open world map because of the rocks. Now, what strikes me is the holographic floor 
and the wall in the background. Does this look like anything to you guys immediately? Because for me, when I saw this and these assets, it made me think instantly of the Aether Blades. It made me think of Twilight Arbor Aether Path, and it made me think of the Aether Blade hideout, some fractally stuff. It made me think Aether Blades. Now, I haven't really mentioned this on a couple of my recent videos, but Aether Blades are worth talking about because if this environment we've seen so much of, say in the sky scale sections of this trailer a second ago, where we're around in the air and there's all the mist, if we are in the mists, don't forget that in season one, I know it's not in game anymore and it's been years and most people are extremely hazy on the details and it really should be in game. I'll pen save that rant for elsewhere. Uh, the Aether Blades did escape. My train did escape. And that's kind of one of those hanging plot points. You know, the Aether Blades are out there in the mist doing something. So that's my theory now. Because of this shot, basically, I'm thinking even more now, maybe in this patch, we meet with the Aether Blades. Now think of the name, the Great Sword, Exordium. Is it going to be some kind of treaty formed between the Aether Blades and the constituent parts of the pact? Because the Aether Blades are kind of antagonists. They're kind of villains at this point in the story, or last we saw them. So maybe we come together, we make an agreement, sort of fold them in to the good guys. And that, that's, that's the whole story here. So yeah, I'm thinking Aether Blades in this patch and I couldn't be more pumped. The Great Sword itself doesn't feel very Aether Blade-y at all to me. But there you go. All right, I'll take my tinfoil hat off now. You guys can see what you think and please do uh, drop a comment or two for me to feast on down there and I'll see how much you agree with me on that. But yeah, so we pulled the Great Sword out uh, and this is the Unsheath. It's kind of um, a vortex that sucks into the middle here. Actually feels a bit like some of the skill animations in the game. There's uh, an underwater mesmer skill particularly that springs to mind. Obviously, the coloring's different. Uh, but yeah, that's Unsheath. And then um, we get a projectile. So this is a warrior with a greatsword using GS4. Or I suppose it could be a ranger, but we never saw the early thing. But if you check it out, instead of normally spinning horizontally, uh, instead it's spinning vertically. And there's a cool sound effect on it as well, as you guys heard uh, a few moments ago. Just kind of nice. Also, I think it's quite cunning what the devs did here, filming this in this area of the map, because the sword is actually clipping into the ground here, but because they put it on a translucent surface, nobody's gonna question the fact that it's cutting into the holographic floor. But this animation will look a bit worse on any other terrain out there. But for the show off, they've cunningly done it right here. And I kind of like that. I wonder if they filmed this in this area here only because of that. And it's led to me now thinking that there's Aether Blades in the patch when they, they that was supposed to be a big secret or something. Uh, or I'm totally wrong, which is also very likely. Here we get this nice animation here as well. This is a Mesmer using the Greatsword auto attack. And you can really see there's a lot of beautiful, intricate detail and moving parts here uh, as it spins around. Uh, and there we have the sheath. You'll notice we never actually got footsteps. I'm pretty sure anywhere in that little section. So that's the great sword. Then lastly, we have mist shard armor. So let's roll through with this. Um, this, I guess, I mean, come on. This is totally heavy, right? Is this the same as what we saw a second ago? Maybe not. But we do have like these shards. Mist shard all on its own is a pretty interesting take, right? And another suggestion that maybe we are in the mists. This one's being filmed on the interior of one of these airships. I mean, the Aether Blade idea, there are a ton of airships out here. Maybe they're all Aether Blade airships, right? Like, these are kind of blue-tinted. Uh, and we got just lots of pink Silvari showing that off, I guess. They move through three shots very quickly, but there's really not much for me to pick at. And then finally, we got War Eternal. They say, coming May 2019. So, I do want to dig into this. Let's go back to the webpage, and we'll talk more about that. So, this is the accompanying blog post, and the dev said this, that the Living World Season 4 finale, War Eternal, is coming next month. Now, this was posted just today, April 30th. They say it's coming next month. Take a peek at some of the features in a video above, and stay tuned for more details in the coming days. So, when they say it's next month, but leave it till the end of April to say that, what do we mean? Well, I think the optimists will go for mid-May. All right, so mid-May is probably your earliest window. We're looking at another two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks. Uh, I think a reasonable guess would be late May, which feels pretty far off, I must say. But obviously, they did have all the layoffs, and we knew that it was going to be a little bit later on this patch as a result. 
And so, you know, maybe that makes sense. I like the idea. I always find myself getting vaguely excited when patches genuinely do start getting pushed a bit later because I wonder how big they're going with it. It's the finale, after all. And last patch, I know, will, is steadily becoming more and more of a distant memory to you guys, but was a really phenomenal patch. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, my God, the last patch was very good. The guys doing the finale have really got to do super well to top episode 5. And it's the finale too, so it already had a lot of weight on its shoulder. So the fact that the release might be getting pushed back a little bit more, uh, if it means that the finale is going to be better for it, obviously I can wait. And I'll come to it in a second. The devs seem to have quite a lot of stuff lined up in the meantime. But yeah, I think that's a reasonable guess late May. If you're a pessimist and they say it's coming next month, but basically, in a couple of days, we're May. That would mean that we're actually not seeing it until May is over. And that would be your pessimist's approach. I really hope we don't have to wait a whole month. But I guess we'll see. I'm not actually confident enough right now as I make this video to say to you guys, oh, it definitely won't be in a month. Who knows, right? So there you have it. That's uh, their next little bit of War Eternal news. And I'll point out as well, they've basically given us the equivalent now of all of the detail that they would usually give before a living world release uh except we may have like a whole month extra to wait what do i mean by that well for a standard living world release all the other ones this season we've basically had a tuesday and we've had a trailer and then the trailer said the patch is next week you get seven days and then it's out and in those seven days they do all the mini little teasers which is essentially the equivalent of what we've just watched but now we've had all of that and we've got a month left waiting i wonder what they'll pad that time out in terms of hype for war eternal i guess we'll see uh so anyway speaking about what to actually play and do in the middle time if you haven't uh found yourself addicted to pvp or world versus world or if you're not uh learning raids and all that kind of stuff at the moment you might be wondering well the devs do have some stuff lined up so let's have a look at this this was announced yesterday uh it's i think only been like 16 hours or something since the blog post came out and i actually really like the sound of it because it looks once again at core Tyria that is so 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 important to do even if i don't think world bosses are that interesting so a world boss beat down what is this first of all the idea of a world boss beat down is new and the idea of week-long bonus events are new so we've got two things to talk about first Lovely uh, concept art of the Shatterer. Next, we think the biggest, baddest monsters terrorizing Tyria's farmlands, swamps, coastlines, tundra, volcanoes, and more have gotten a little too comfortable in their routines. We're shaking things up by hitting them where it counts right in the loot drops. From May 6th, so this is starting pretty soon, to the 13th. Uh, and so you'll notice, right? May 13th, I'm guessing War Eternal won't be out before May 13th, especially in conjunction with a, a, a developer comment we'll read in a second. Uh, you'll get a bonus box of goods every world boss you participate in defeating. There's a rare chance for these bonus boxes to contain especially shiny items like the cosmetic infusions and invisible footwear. When one of the loathsome creatures is active near you, we'll issue you a special notice so you and your fellow adventurers can locate it easily, swoop in and smack it down. So this is a new thing, a notification system for world bosses. Uh, you can obviously buy these items on the gem store that do that for you. I think most recently they did a Heart of Thorns one, and they're actually kind of useful. Those gem store items give you waypoints and stuff and actually teleport you. Uh, this won't do that. So people who bought the gem store things, I don't think necessarily have been cheated now because it's going to be in-game. And remember, this is only in-game for one week. If you bought or buy one of the things on the gem store, you have it forever, as well as the actual teleportation functionality. So that is important. But uh, yeah, this is new and sounds nice enough. But these wild boss boxes, these extra boxes, shiny items like cosmetic infusions, what I interpret this to mean, guys, is the Queen Bee will no longer be just in the Silver Waste. And the Chuck Egg Sack will no longer just be for killing the Chuck Geraint. And the Confetti Infusion will no longer just be from Amnoon. Those later two, I think, are pretty interesting because they're actually expansion rewards in a way. I guess if you're a core account you could buy them off the TP or be gifted them. So maybe maybe that doesn't sort of matter. Maybe that's not relevant. But uh, these will now come from anything. And because world bosses fire so quickly, you guys probably haven't done a world boss train for a while if you're anything like me. But you can go through them pretty quick. And that means that instead of waiting for one chance at a chuck egg sack every two hours... You get one every few minutes, a chance every few minutes. And not just a chuck egg sack. You've got a chance at a queen bee. You've got a chance at this and this. I doubt the drop rates themselves are any different. But just because so many people will be drawn to this and because you can have a shot at it so much more frequently, 
these things will be dropping. And that means they'll be cheaper on the TP if you just want to straight up brute force buy one of them off of that. Suddenly, I found myself very happy I sold my Queen Bee quite recently. And also, they've got the invisible footwear here. This is one of those ultra rare Heart of Thorns drops people don't think about much coming from Treasure Mushrooms. And well, they've been thrown around as well. I like the idea of the event. I really do. Just because... It's that cohesion between the new content that everyone cares about and is spending so much time in and core, right? To me, core is a platform for the game that should be continually improved and updated and players should feel is a justified area of Guild Wars 2 to explore and enjoy. But increasingly as time goes by, people are thinking, oh, it's not worth going to the core Tyria maps. It's not worth participating and making new characters and stuff like that because core has got like this idea that it's too old. And the game, that, that's not a healthy state for the game to be in to me. So I'm really happy to see this event will cross people uh, over all different areas. And uh, I'll probably do a little bit of it before I get too bored of the world bosses. I find this quite interesting here. They say week long bonus world bosses date and time and then they say gameplay variant gain a bonus box of goods from participating well this seems like a format where they could just change up the details right well that's exactly what they intend to do Te check out this forum post here from my renio and it's pretty insightful with a very exciting little note in there too uh, probably the best thing to come out of all of this so here he says hey all while the team is working toward the release of episode 6 and the future of guild wars 2 a few of us are building out a stable of bonus events You've already so this is kind of like a an extra little project they're doing building out several bonus events this is just the first of them you've already seen world versus world week long bonus event with no downstate that was just what fired and you've seen the queen jubilee boss blitz weekend uh, but soon we'll release other bonus events. The first iterations of two of the planned events are complete and we have two more in active development. Our intention is to run these during times where there are no major releases and reward players for participating. So what Guild Wars 2 will basically have is living world releases, festival releases, current event releases and bonus events. Yeah, so that's what we'll be doing while waiting for War Eternal, I guess. During this week, all world boss kills in Corteria Zones will reward a bonus box of goods in addition to normal loot. The second, so here we get to start hearing about the future, they have a thing called Meta Event Rush. Now, it, world bosses are often at the end of meta events, okay? So don't get too confused here. But they say Meta Event Rush is going to start a few weeks after the world boss week. During meta event rush, our intention is to remove the daily cap on all world meta event completion rewards and to reward additional loot for some of our meta events. All right, I'll just stop there. The sentence gets really exciting. But first of all, uh, yeah, no more daily cap. What this would mean is you keep getting that big floating box, say, when you're doing the Heart of Thorns metas, and you can get flooded with mats. This could be really good if you want to stock up a ton of stuff for Heart of Thorns uh, legendary crafting process. In fact, if you want that new greatsword, this is probably the perfect time to get in and get all that Heart of Thorns stuff done for the Maguma Gift of Mastery, which really irritated me on the last one I made, which was the legendary scepter. So, yeah, that's what they'll be doing. And you might think, oh, Heart of Thorns, okay, fine, but th there's only one expansion worth of stuff for them to play with on Meta Event Rush, really. Well, here, check it out. To pair with some improvements to the Path of Fire map Meta Events, more info will come closer to the event. They're actually going back to the Path of Fire maps and looking at the rewards of those metas. Guys, I dream of a world where the Path of Fire maps are ran just as frequently and enthusiastically as the Heart of Thorns ones are. We're well off the Heart of Thorns now, and people still really happily go back to Auric Basin and go and do Tangled Depths. These things have value. And what do we have for Path of Fire? It makes the Path of Fire maps feel so empty by comparison, and it's always just been a problem with rewards. There's a little bit on the content side and how those meta events are done, but we should be treasure hunting. The most we do is the casino uh, coins in Amnoon. I agree with that, definitely. But what about the desolation meta event? And what about the fun stuff in Vabi? Give us better rewards for it. And that's what they're doing. They're actually making these improvements now. So two things to be excited about there. Uh, and they'll pair it off with a, a weak a rush to where we can just spam them up with no daily limit. It's really interesting, just as a concept, by the way, for the devs to say, we're doing an event where we remove daily caps. Like, up until this point with the development of this game, that's never been something they've played with. But there you have it. They uh, finally say, well, I can't talk too much about what we have be planned beyond that. We aren't restricting ourselves to inside the box design. See, like this, again, I feel like removing daily caps feels sort of outside the box, right? 
Uh, and maybe that's what they're sort of alluding to here. Uh, some of them make significant shakeups to their game modes during the time they run. Future iterations we're thinking about are no daily limit on world boss loot, rare harvesting nodes after world boss kills, community goals and rewards. Now, we saw them tamper with this a little bit in the past. Uh, collections and meta events with titles. Uh, none of this really flares up to me, and none of it really seems to tap into the competitive modes either for me, which is a bit of a shame. This is where our community comes in. We want to make events that leverage existing content and resources while being fun and rewarding for you to play. We welcome your ideas and blah, blah, blah. So if you guys have ideas, um, you know, they're, they're practically begging for people for feedback. If you look at any of these posts, they keep saying, oh, we want your feedback. So if you do want to give it, go to the forums and you can uh, throw that out. So there you go, guys. Uh, like I said, pretty interesting week. Several new things uh, to look at and to talk about. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be sure to keep you in the loop as the week goes along. Don't forget the dungeon series is going on. Twilight Arbor will be where we're visiting next and I'll probably post that in just a couple of hours after this one goes up. So keep an eye out, guys. I hope you enjoy. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.